My name is Kenny Dial, and welcome to Season 2 of the Scuba Diving Podcast. If you're a scuba diver and a member of the deaf community or sign language community, my next guest needs no introduction. Thomas Cock was the first ever deaf Hattie course director, which is above instructor. That's somebody that can take somebody from open water all the way to instructor. And he's the owner of Aqua Hands. So this podcast is going to be a little bit different because we are interpreting, thanks to Jeffrey Dunlap, who's standing there as well. We sort of jumped into this. We just did it. It's my first time, so I appreciate everyone's patience. This was one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done. We do have the video version with captions on all platforms that support that, including Spotify, YouTube, and whoever else out there does it. So, thank you again, and let's jump in. Paul, thanks for coming on. Hey, great. I'm really happy to be here. Why do you do what you do? And that's teaching scuba diving underwater. Why do I do what I do? Let's see. So, I teach... And so when I became a first diver like 27 years ago, I had a lot of people that were looking at me like, you're a deaf person, you can't dive, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. I was getting really upset about it, but I went through it for a lot of years. After 15 years of going through this, I decided, I think it's time to become an instructor. And you know, I had some barriers come up during that time. But after I became an instructor, people started realizing, wow, deaf people are really, really good at scuba diving. You know. The hearing people are the ones that are handicapped under the water, right? I'm not handicapped <laughs> once we get under the water at all, right? Because I'm 100% accessible for communication under the water. So I'm pulling more deaf divers into the diving community to show everybody else that we can be amazing divers. Why doesn't the scuba industry adopt sign language underwater? That is my biggest challenge right now. It's still to this day something I'm fighting against. Like people just come up some with their own signs for stuff and that sign really is offensive to a lot of the people in the deaf community like this sign like this means bastard this means you're mm. shitting so i'm thinking man hello why are you using this inappropriate sign language i'm deaf i'm from a whole deaf family i've been using sign language my whole entire life and you can come ask us i'll teach you the right sign to use hello i'm here i'm here to help you so i don't want you to offend anybody when you're doing it I want more deaf people to be, be involved, more sign language users, more hearing people, like Jeffrey the interpreter today. They can feel offensive too if you're using these signs that are really inappropriate. So I'm here to educate, ask us, I'm here to help teach you how to communicate better, not just learn the marine life signs, but also I can help you communicate. If you have a problem underwater, I can communicate how to fix that. So everybody needs to know sign language underwater. I think it'd be so much better to make you a better diver. 100% agree. <laughs> and I, I wish I knew more. I had deaf students one time. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Two, Where was that? About seven years ago in St. Augustine. Ah, uh, that's but, where the deaf school is. Yes, yes. And we did our checkout dives in West Palm Beach offshore. I believe we may have done Blue Heron, but we went offshore like breakers, uh, you know, the usual suspects. Okay. Nice. 40, 60 foot reefs. And how was your experience with the deaf guys? So I, I was scared. And okay. academics in the classroom, there were challenges. Okay. Their mother totally did the translation, who was also uh... a student. Ah, uh, she was a student and an interpreter. But once we got through the academics, underwater, they were the best in the class of, I think, around 10 or so people. Yeah, that's true. That's what normally happens. And what blew my mind was the fact that they were having straight up conversations down there. They were making dinner plans while we're just trying to check our air pressure. And they yeah, could yeah. talk. Oh yeah, that's what I, we talked about football. We can talk about whatever. whatever. You want to have dinner later tonight? We can talk about what fish we're seeing. We can talk about, oh yeah, I like this on Making the Making fun of me. This, yeah. yeah, we can be making fun of you. Sorry, sometimes we do that. Yeah, we sure. have full access to communication underwater. So when I teach a group of people, yeah, there's problems that pop up, but they prop up. I talk about them underwater, we solve that problem underwater, we're good, and then we keep going with the dive. So when we don't have any communication underwater, you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, everybody go up. So you got to end the dive and go up. 
I fix it underwater and we keep going. So mm-hmm. I can solve the problem in the moment. So if it's serious, of course we can come up, but most of the problems are really small. Most of them are pretty big. Oh, I got a little I know, water in my mask, I need something or whatever. People try to freak out. You don't have to hurry up and do this. But if you could just communicate even the basics underwater. So sometimes I can tell, oh, my mask is leaking a little bit and then I can instruct you underwater how to fix it. Oh, okay, all right. I feel a lot better now. All right, we're gonna keep on going with the dive. So it's amazing what we can do. So when some people see another group of people, they don't have communication like we do. And they're like, I see them going up and then coming down and going up and coming down. But we stay the whole 50 minutes hour underwater. So we, we have to come up and explain new problems. We have to talk about it. Get the video. Um, the, we have to come up, talk about it every time. Exactly We're right. We're losing and bottom I time and not. comfort. You're exactly right. And one thing that I wanted to mention for confined water, the big key there is, well, hearing people or not, people that don't know sign language, right? when we get into the confined water, their downtime underneath the water in the pool, you know, maybe two to five minutes. And then they're really not getting the full comfortability in the water yet, because they're still going up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down. But my confined water class is 100% done underwater. So Man. my deaf students come down and stay down. We're down the whole 50 minutes, right? We're there the whole entire time. We can do all the skills underwater. We don't come up and down, up and down. So that whole time is confined water in the water. But people that don't have those skills but have no idea, right? When they go do open water number one, they're like, oh man, I'm so scared. I've never been underwater this long before. What if I run out of air? But my clients have already done it because we've stayed under the whole 40, 50 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. We've stayed down the whole entire time because I could teach the whole class right there. So do you, when you have deaf students, do you give them bigger tanks? <laughs> should you? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah. Because we laugh a lot underwater, right? <laughs> we're making fun of other people that don't know what we're doing. And uh, yeah, we, we probably talk too much underwater. But uh, I do teach the whole entire thing. I teach everybody very slow. The one problem that I do have with my deaf divers, we do, do have a problem. Uh, I always teach them to uh, do pillow talk. You know what I mean by that? Oh, hold on. Got a cough. So pillow talk right pillow so talk. when you go to bed yeah, yeah, when you go to bed at night right yeah. <laughs> and you talk right this right when deaf people they uh, see yeah. something they turn around and then they go like this right and then they start going up because i like, no, no 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 keep coming back down so when you're not paying attention to your buoyancy if you're chatting just standing like this and we're having a conversation but now i'm not paying attention so i have to lay my head like a pillow and sign sideways so we still staying like this because deaf people want to stand up and look and talk like this. And so, oh, did you see this? Did you see this? And we tend to come up and then, then we have a problem because now okay. you're not streamlined in the water. So you have to put like your head is on a pillow down here and sign sideways. And that triggers you to remember that. to get neutral and maintain neutral buoyancy. Exactly right. Yep. Yep. That, now, once they get more experience, they still have to do that. Up to I'm them. fine now, but okay. you know, I can go all over the place anywhere. But those new people, when they first come on board, I have to make sure, hey, remember last week we talked about that? Well, I just went in the Bahamas last week with a big group of deaf divers. We had some people that are doing this. I had, hey, remember, lay on your side, lay on your side. But by the end of the week, everybody was good to go. Everybody was diving great. We had the best communication in the Bahamas and you know, all the hours, the hour each dive, everything was going really, really good. Does the hand uh, scrolling go away quicker? I guess it's a better way. They sort of have Deaf to. Deaf people do not do that at all. They don't do the schooling stuff at all. Really? No, because we're actually teaching and talking underwater, right? So when you go to teach other hearing people that don't know how to sign and they're doing this, you know, I can see the person doing this and, I, hey, stop moving your hands, right? I can sign it to them. Hey, you're moving your hands too much. Stop. So I'm teaching them underwater. So if you see somebody doing that and scolding them, it might be hard to get them to stop, right. but I can get them to really stop doing it and maybe sign back to me and get their mind off of scolding with their hands and teach them the right way to do it. Right? So I have all these tools in my toolkit on how I can help them once we get under the water. I never, it never occurred to me the, the advantages 
uh, especially from a teaching perspective, uh, to address all that stuff in that moment directly, instantly. Uh, yep. I, I, that's priceless. So it's safe to say that deaf scuba divers overall get comfortable underwater much quicker than everyone else. Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. very much so. <laughs> uh, I've been to a lot of different places, Roatan, Mexico, the Bahamas, we've been diving everywhere. And all the places that we go to, all of their dive masters that are working with us are like, oh man, it's like a vacation for us. I don't have to do anything with you guys. <laughs> you get in the water and do it. You lead us and the dive masters just come along behind us. So they're like, oh, please come back again because the deaf divers were so easy to work with. So I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll come back with you again, no problem at all. In the beginning, when you first started teaching, a belief or expectation that has flipped entirely now that you've done it for a long time. He can take his time yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. So when I first started diving back in 1995, oh wow, that was a long, long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, it was tough. It was a big challenge for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so, so people were looking at me and thinking, "Oh, you can't do this. You use a different language than I do. You have to use your hands to communicate." They, people were really scared to work with me, and so I didn't know how to work with those people either. Right? You have to have a regulator in your mouth so you can't talk underwater, right? And so I thought I could do it. So trying to get people to work with me was a was a big challenge at first. But now, like, say Jeffrey's up here in this window, right? Jeffrey could be standing up there, and I could be standing down here, and I could sign to him, and I'm like, hey, go get oh, me a wow. water, and he'll understand me. So now Ooh, I know how to yeah. use that for to my advantage. I didn't know how to use that at my advantage when I was underwater, when I very first started diving. But now I can see what it is. So hearing people, you're stuck behind that window. I see through the window and can communicate through the window. Before, when I started working with my deaf people, they wanted to classify us all as handicapped divers or adaptive divers. They're like, no, we're not the adaptive divers. You hearing people are the adaptive <laughs> divers underwater. So I've helped the whole industry change their opinion about us as well along the way. Are there any scenarios where you do feel like it is a disadvantage? Physically speaking, diving, you know, and diving. Yeah, I can say that maybe on the boat, like, Hey, if they, you know they're banging oh, something on the yeah. boat, you know we can't hear it. I have right, no idea right. you're doing that. You could be doing whatever, right? Uh, we, for me, I always try to stay closer to the boat, uh, and I keep my eyes way out here, right? I have a big, big field of vision, so if I see somebody else heading towards the boat, I know maybe it's our time to head towards the boat, okay. so I can you know go with them and head up because I can't hear if they're clanging something up and right. say. So that's where you do have the advantage, maybe, if there's an emergency on the boat and we need to head up. That could be it, but, uh, man, that's the only thing that I could really think of. Maybe warnings when you get on the boat. A long time ago, the briefings were tough, uh, but I learned how to adjust the briefings, and I'm always like, hey, give me the sheets, let me do it, show me the dive site, and I can do the briefing myself. I can explain it to all the other deaf divers. So those are probably the biggest ones. If there's any kind of hearing emergency or something like that could be the only thing. What would you want to tell any deaf person out there that's considering scuba diving? One thing. We are here. Yeah. We are superior in this realm. Come and see <laughs> us. Yeah. You can, you know, you, it's a big self-esteem booster when you can come and do this, right? It's not just deaf people, but it's other people that maybe know sign language like Jeffrey here, right? Other people, it's, they make great, great divers. It's a great thing to do. You can really feel good about yourself. Uh, I'll get to tell you, last time last summer, no, actually last December, I was teaching one, I just had one student, right? It, it, he wasn't really interested, and then he came and took my class. We got in the water, and he realized that, that the deafness could be a big advantage for him. And then he's like, oh, I want to become an instructor. I want to be a dive master. I want to do all these different things. I want to go with all these rescue courses. 
And once he had the experience of having somebody with him like me in the water, those challenges went away. And now he has a bigger self-esteem and he can really move up the ladder. Awesome. Absolutely love hearing this. So the rest of the divers that are too scared to do it, they have no excuse. They need to learn sign language. We all need to learn sign language. Yeah, the industry, it's not that hard. It's not that even hard. Some, maybe maybe the, the, the usual uh, signs like checking air and uh, okay, not okay, you know, weights, especially shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially that one. But it really, it's, it's, it's not that tough. I've seen some other patties, some other agencies, some other signs are like, they're all right. I'm not too bad with them. They're, they're basically just gestures. There's nothing really wrong with them. Go up, go down, that's fine. I use these same things. I, you, these same signs are the ones that I use in American Sign Language. But like this sign, for example, right? What do you think this one means? When I sign this to you, what do you think it means? What's that mean? Well, I've seen it mean danger. Exactly right. Now to me, that means <laughs> a fist bump, right? <laughs> right? So it means danger. So this is a sign for danger, yeah, right? And this is, this is a sign for danger. Okay. So this is like a shield, right? And there's something dangerous coming up. I mean, the shield is protecting me. So this is like my defense. So that's where the sign comes from. So, so like danger, this. danger, danger. One hand okay. moves. There you go. Like that. Uh -huh. But danger. if there's this, they might think up, right? It's, no. no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to think about it. If you're right. doing this, we're coming up. Right. But if I'm using both of my hands and I'm moving right. them like this, it means that okay. there's danger right there. So watch out because something's right there. It's dangerous and stay away. So some signs uh, make sense and some of them maybe not so much, but people can always ask me. I'm mean, always happy to help you out with it. Uh, I'm not looking to change the whole industry around. We can make some, some modifications and adapt what's already out there to the appropriate signs that should be used. And I feel like we can all make this work together, right? Yeah. It's not, it's a whole international thing. It's not just here in America, but everywhere. We can do it everywhere. I'm I'm absolutely a proponent of it. Um, maybe maybe we can use this video and get it to the right people. Um, all right, I got another yeah. deaf related question. What's your Bring favorite? It. What's your favorite dive? No, I was just kidding. Uh, <laughs> my favorite dive? Man, anywhere there's water. <laughs> well, there's Let's some go. gator swamps out here though. So yeah, I did over in Rainbow River. They got, they got, oh, I've that's seen, beautiful. Got, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, but I've seen gators there before. I'm actually going tomorrow. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> you guys right. got to check where's out your, our... Where's your favorite place? This one's kind of long-winded, so I'm going to make it short. My favorite place has changed into where I had the most fun with the dive, coupled with the people and the surrounding activities. Because yeah, I'll take sense. a lesser dive if there's also a lot of other great people and things to do around it, that becomes my favorite dive. That yep, opinion that has sense. changed for me. I would totally agree with that. I would totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got 4,000 dives, something like that, close to 5,000. I've dived in you know, so many different places. Rainbow River, probably 500, 600 times. Really? But, you know, but I love seeing people feel inspired. Like, you know, one of the perfect examples is I had a guy that came to one of my classes. I was like, hey, there's a fish over there. And I'm like, hey, hey, look at me, look at me. There's a fish right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, okay. This guy was so excited just to be able to see a fish. I was like, man, I feel like I'm in an aquarium. This guy was so excited just to be able to see fish and see the marine life. So me seeing this guy happy was what really makes me happy. So I love seeing the industry grow and more of my people come on board. Awesome. Learning sign language is not that hard. It's hard to maintain, yes, right? So you can learn it, and I admit it. That if you don't use it all the time, it kind of goes away. But, but, oh, Jeffrey, I'm going to stop interpreting. So it's now just you guys. I'm not going to interpret anything okay. anymore. <laughs> what do you think these signs are? He's eating, I mean, uh -huh. drinking, yeah, 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 yeah. sleeping, yeah. 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 thriving. Yeah. Easy. So, so now, yeah, yeah, they're easy. You're right. They're easy. So American Sign Language is highly based on pictures and concepts and actions. So it's not really hard to learn and to understand. It's hard to maintain if you don't have some practice with it. You know, you have to 
keep feeding into the system. But I think it's not that hard. Everybody should learn a little bit of sign language. Come on, you can learn a little bit and you'd be amazed of how much your diving experience will totally improve. You know, whether you're worried about you know, people you know, having a problem and trying to solve it underwater or not having to end your dive too quickly, right? If something is really simple to fix, we can fix it down there underwater. You don't have to do, you know, going up and down, up and down all the time. So if you just learn that's, some basic that's stuff. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. That's the worst part about the whole training. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> you got it. You got it. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on the show. And I can't, <laughs> can't wait to dive with you. We need to do a dive. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening and tuning in to the Scuba Diving Podcast. None of this is possible without you being here. This show relies 100% on divers and the aquatically interested people just like you. Even something so simple as just hitting that five-star review or subscribe. That does wonders. There's lots of ways to help, contribute, donate. Everything is appreciated. And of course, check out our other series like the Down to 60 One Minute To The Point Dive Site Reviews. We're on pretty much every platform, Instagram, TikTok. Look for Sweetwater Scuba, Scuba Diving Channel, Scuba Diving Podcast. Links are definitely somewhere on your device. If you're on Spotify or YouTube, you can watch this in video form. Don't forget, if you know somebody that you think would add to this show and would make a great guest, then of course, dive at Sweetwater Scuba or keep it simple, sweetwaterscuba at gmail.com. Or just go on the website or direct message me on whatever platform you're on right now. Let's show the rest of the world the rest of the world and hope to see you underwater soon. Yeah.